Dearly beloved congregation, today we gather to meditate upon the natural force that is anger. As we contemplate the gravity of this emotional phenomenon, we must acknowledge its weight upon us. Anger is a primordial instinctual response to perceived threats or injustices. It is a physiological and psychological reaction that serves as an adaptive mechanism for survival. However, when left unchecked, anger can evolve into a destructive force that destabilizes not only the individual, but also the community and society as a whole. The consequences of unbridled anger are dire and manifold. Anger can lead to rash decision-making, impaired judgment, and impulsive behavior, resulting in harm to oneself and others. It can also perpetuate a vicious cycle of retaliation and escalation, fueling conflicts and strife. Moreover, anger can lead to deep-seated resentment and bitterness, which can poison one's spirit and impair one's ability to experience joy and peace. It can erode trust, breed animosity, and sow seeds of division, creating fissures in the fabric of society. Therefore, it is incumbent upon us to recognize the power of anger and exercise self-control, channeling our energies towards constructive and positive outlets. We must strive to cultivate empathy, understanding and compassion, recognizing the humanity in ourselves and others. Let us heed the wise counsel of the ancients who have admonished us to be angry and sin not. Let us harness the natural force of anger, transform it into a positive and transformative energy, and use it as a catalyst for personal and social transformation. As we reflect on the nature of anger, we cannot help but consider the insights of great thinkers and philosophers throughout history. Among the most notable of these are Socrates, Plato, and Aristotle, whose teachings continue to inspire and challenge us. Socrates, the iconic philosopher of ancient Athens, believed that anger was a manifestation of ignorance and that knowledge and wisdom were the antidotes to anger. He taught that only through rigorous self-examination and critical thinking could we transcend our base emotions and achieve a state of equanimity and inner harmony. Plato, Socrates' most famous student, also explored the complexities of anger in his dialogues. He recognized the potential dangers of uncontrolled anger, but he also saw its potential as a motivating force for positive change. For Plato, the key to harnessing anger lay in cultivating the virtues of courage and temperance, which enabled individuals to act justly and wisely. Aristotle, another legendary philosopher of ancient Greece, approached anger from a different perspective. He viewed anger as a natural and necessary emotion, but one that could be either virtuous or vicious, depending on how it was expressed. Aristotle saw anger as a response to perceived injustice or wrongdoing, and he believed that it could be channeled towards virtuous action, such as seeking redress for grievances or standing up for one's beliefs. In his Nicomachean Ethics, Aristotle argues that the key to harnessing anger lies in cultivating the virtue of meekness, which involves finding the right balance between excessive anger and insufficient anger. Meekness enables individuals to respond to perceived injustices with appropriate anger but also to exercise self-control and avoid overreacting or retaliating inappropriately. The philosophy of Stoicism also offers valuable insights into the nature of anger and how individuals can respond to it. For the Stoics, anger was seen as a destructive and irrational emotion that arose from false beliefs and judgments. They believed that the key to overcoming anger was to cultivate the virtues of reason, self-control, and emotional detachment. The Stoic response to anger involved a rigorous process of self-examination and self-discipline. It required individuals to question their assumptions and beliefs, and to develop a more rational and objective perspective on the events and people that triggered their anger. It also involved cultivating an attitude of acceptance and detachment, recognizing that some things were outside of our control and that our emotional reactions were often the result of our own irrational expectations and desires. To integrate Stoicism in our daily response to anger, we can start by practicing mindfulness and reflection. We can become more aware of our emotional states and learn to observe our thoughts and feelings without getting caught up in them. We can also adopt a more compassionate and empathetic attitude towards others, recognizing that everyone has their own struggles and challenges. 
The Stoics also emphasized the importance of cultivating a sense of gratitude and contentment, focusing on what we have rather than what we lack. By developing a more positive and constructive outlook on life, we can reduce the triggers of anger and become more resilient in the face of adversity. The biblical quote, the meek shall inherit, is often interpreted as a call to humility and gentleness. But it can also be seen in the Nicomachean sense of meekness as a virtue of self-control and emotional balance. Meekness, as Aristotle defined it, is not a weakness or a lack of assertiveness, but rather a skillful response to anger that involves finding the right balance between excessive anger and insufficient anger. It is true that individuals are often more receptive to straightforward and clear emotions than to complex and nuanced arguments based on reason or anger. Emotions such as empathy, love, and fear can resonate deeply with people and have a powerful impact on their beliefs and behaviors. Reason and anger, on the other hand, are more complex and abstract emotions that can be difficult to convey and understand. While reason is often seen as a powerful tool for persuasion, it requires careful argumentation and evidence to be convincing. Similarly, anger can be a powerful motivator for action, but it can also cloud judgment and lead to destructive behaviors. Despite their limitations, reason and anger can still play a role in convincing people to lean in a specific way. Reason can be effective in situations where individuals are open to debate and willing to consider new ideas and perspectives. By presenting evidence, logical arguments, and compelling stories, reason can help individuals see the merits of a particular viewpoint and make informed decisions. Anger, on the other hand, can be effective in situations where individuals feel passionately about an issue and are motivated to take action. By tapping into people's sense of injustice and moral outrage, anger can inspire individuals to take a stand, speak out, and fight for what they believe in. However, reason and anger are not always effective in convincing people to lean in a specific way. In many cases, individuals are resistant to change and may be unwilling or unable to consider alternative viewpoints or emotions. In these situations, it may be necessary to use other strategies such as storytelling, personal connection, or appeals to shared values and beliefs. Anger is a natural force that can have both positive and negative effects on individuals and society. Ancient philosophers such as Socrates, Plato, and Aristotle saw anger as a powerful emotion that needed to be controlled and directed towards productive ends. The Stoics believed that anger was a destructive and irrational emotion that could be overcome through self-discipline, reason, and emotional detachment. To integrate Stoicism in our daily response to anger, we can practice mindfulness and reflection, adopt a more compassionate and empathetic attitude, and cultivate a sense of gratitude and contentment. While reason and anger can be powerful tools for persuasion, they are not always the most effective means of convincing individuals to lean in a specific way, and other strategies such as storytelling, personal connection, or appeals to shared values and beliefs may be necessary.